uh, to have this opportunity. I'm usually downstairs with the little ones. Mm -hmm. Today yes. I get a chance yes. to minister to the big ones. <laughs> Same Holy Spirit. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. Right before I begin, let's pray. Yes, yes. Lord. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come before you in humbleness of heart, uh, knowing, Lord, that if you're not in it, nothing is done, nothing meaningful is achieved. So, Father, we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus that you would fill this message and that you would cause your word to become alive in the hearts of your people and that we would be a people who look at the word, keep looking at the word, and are changed by it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, the title of this message today is The Blessing of Fellowship. Amen. And as I said to Pastor Nett yesterday, this is something you have heard probably in recent weeks and months, but like our Old Pastor Tony used to say, God is redundant. <laughs> and yeah, as a teacher, teachers are redundant. <laughs> and sometimes you see your, see your students, their eyes are rolling over, saying to themselves, you've heard this before. Yeah. But if your teacher is telling you it again, it probably means that you didn't quite get it the first time around. <laughs> so here it comes again. The Holy Spirit impresses upon my heart, and I believe this is what he'd have us to um, focus on today. Um, now, as some of you may remember, a few weeks ago, I stood and gave a wonderful testimony of the goodness of God in the life of my family. On, Jan on January 15th, my mother was, my family was told that my mother is dying. She had between 12 and 24 hours to live, and the Lord stepped in and did a mighty miracle. Mm -hmm. Now, on that day, the entire family rallied. I come from a big family, seven children. I'm the eldest of the seven. Wherever we were, whether we had to fly into Ottawa or, or drive, and some drove through the night to get into Ottawa, we wanted to be there for our mother. And that was a crisis situation. And I'm sure in all our families, if there's a crisis, we drop everything and we rally. Amen. But it's after the crisis <laughs> that other demands are made on the family. And if someone is ill, then, you know, who is going to be there to support that person during recovery? Right. And in some families, you'll find that there are some people who are always ready to step up and do whatever it takes, and others kind of fade to the background. And that could be for a number of reasons. It could be because they don't love the other person as much. But more often than not, they have demands on their lives that make it hard to help. But when everyone can pull together, whether it's just a little bit or a lot, it makes it easier on everyone around. And today I want to talk to you about the fact that the fact our church here at Christ the Life Ministries is a family. Amen. Yes, amen. And like a natural family, you don't get to pick your brother or sister. <laughs> you get what you get, right? <laughs> and here in Christ the Life Ministry, the same holds true. <laughs> you don't get to pick your brothers and sisters. 
But the head of our family, Christ the Life Ministries, is the eternal, Power. almighty God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And we get to call him Abba. Abba. Yes. Father. Amen. And our father is a good father, yes. a tender father, a wise father. And the longer you walk with your father, the more you realize that to be true. And while we didn't get a chance to pick out our brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. our Heavenly Father handpicked each of us. Mm -hmm. The Word of God says, before the foundations of the earth, He knew us. So we're not an accident, we're not an afterthought. We were handpicked by our eternal Father and planted here. And He has promised lots of good things to His children. And some of these covenant promises happen only when we are together. Amen. That's right. Amen. In Psalm 133, it says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment poured on the head that ran down on the beard, even the beard of Aaron, the first high priest, that came down upon the collar and skirts of his garments, consecrating the whole body. It is like the dew of lofty Mount Hermon, and the dew that comes on the hills of Zion. For there, the Lord commanded the blessing, yes. even life forevermore upon the high and the lowly. That word unity also means harmony. And when we think of harmony, we think of music. And if you're going to harmonize, the choir, the group, has to be in the same place, right? And each person has to adjust their voice so you work with everyone else. So you make a melodious sound. Mm. Yes. That word Amen. unity mm. okay, flipping that page. <clears throat> means unitedness. So the Lord is not a respect of persons. The Holy Spirit operates where there is unity unitedness of purpose and togetherness in location and he uses in his sovereignty whomsoever he desires regardless of your social standing or anything else the word tells you is a division a divisor what happens here is under the sovereign sovereign power of the Holy Spirit. His rules apply. So anything that disrupts the unity of the body Amen, interferes mm -hmm. with the work of the Holy Spirit in our midst. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we have a charge, a responsibility. However different we may see ourselves, we need to do all we can to safeguard our unity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And we don't need to go into all that has happened in the church because outside forces, outside ideas told us that we were different. Amen. 
We are one. God wants us to be united. In the early church, the believers were in the upper room waiting and praying because the Lord had told them that's where they needed to be. Sure. Yes. In Acts 2 verse 1 we read, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all assembled together in one place. Amen. Amen. When suddenly there came a sound from heaven, like the rushing of a violent tempest blast, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There was a sound mm. from heaven mm. that filled the whole house. Hallelujah. If you were in the house, you heard. Jesus. If you were in the house, mm. you received. Mm. Mm. There is a blessing to be in the house God Hallelujah. at the time when the Holy Spirit chooses yes. to pour out his blessings. Yes. 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 Everything that God wants us to have that's good. The world, the enemy, mm -hmm. our flesh. Mm -hmm. puts up a fight against mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. We know that to be our experience. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So what are the things that interfere with fellowship? And fellowship can be at different levels. There's fellowship with God, there's fellowship here formally in the sanctuary, there is casual fellowship, in the fellowship hall, right? Fellowship right. hall. Mm -hmm. The different types of fellowship. Like in a family, right? You interact differently. Yeah. And on the dining table, you're together in prayer, you're lounging around, but you're together. You're interacting, you're building bonds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are the things that interfere with fellowship? Well, if you've been a believer long enough, you know, I'm the whole list, there could be a fence, right? Yes. And that's not a new strategy. Even in the book of Acts, remember the Greek and Hebrew widows, right? They, they felt they were being treated fairly. People got offended. That had to be sorted out. Mm. There's a fear of rejection. Will they like me? Will they think I'm good enough? Will they really knew me? You're sinning your life, right? You know you're sinning. Mm -hmm. You know if you go hang out with the brethren, you'll probably be exposed, so you don't hang out with the brethren. Yes, so true. But what's very common and what I'm gonna be focusing on today is one that I have struggled with, and I see a lot of people struggle with it, and that's being too busy mm. for fellowship. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's right. That's true. That's true. The Lord commands his blessings mm. when we are together. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Hallelujah. And yet, they're often not together. An old favorite, but every time you read it, you discover something else. The parable of the soul and the seed. And they're different, same seed, but different outcomes, right? And in describing the outcomes of the different seeds, Jesus tells of one kind in Mark 4, verse 7. 
Other seed of the same kind fell among thorn plants, and the thistles grew and pressed together, and utterly choked and suffocated it, and it yielded no grain. And you can interpret it however you want, but Jesus interpreted it, mm -hmm. so we're going to go right. with his interpretation. Yes. <laughs> yes. In verse 19, it says, Then the cares and anxieties of the world and the distractions of the age, it's one group, and the pleasure and delight and false glamour and deceitfulness of riches, that's another group, and the craving and passionate desire for other things, third group, creep in and choke and suffocate the word and it becomes fruitless. So I thought about what's a good natural picture you know, teachers like to give examples, concrete examples. And I came across this plant, the kudzu. Sister Lisa is going to bring it up shortly. Mm. And you might be wondering, what is kudzu? Well, you have seen a kudzu if you have driven along the highway. It's this thing that creates a thick green blanket that covers a lot of trees that we'd normally see. That's kudzu. And every time I see it, I wonder where is the Department of Works? <laughs> Why aren't they cleaning away this site? disgusting sad. It is so upsetting to me. You know it's an invasion. You know it shouldn't be there, but it is. But Kazu didn't start out as an unwelcome guest or considered an invasive species. In fact, there was a time when the U.S. government encouraged farmers and others to plant Kazu because it helped prevent soil erosion and was a good fodder for cattle. So we know a little bit about U.S. history. There was a dust bowl in the 30s, and you oh, see the yes. pictures. Mm -hmm. So the topsoil was being blown away. So they needed something to hold on to the topsoil and keep the soil in place, and Kanzu was, was great. It came over from Asia. They saw it at a World Fair. Everything was doing lovely, and they started planting it, and it worked. The cattle loved it, it was good food for the cattle. And goats, they have discovered, for them it's like candy. They can't get enough of they, they, can't, they can't get enough of kudzu. So, you know, the price of, of goat meat may go down because goats love it, right? How do you spell that? K-U-D-Z-U. K-U-D-Z-U. Okay, now, no, not, okay. So it was working for the holding the soil and for um, and for the cattle and for the goats as well. And people also planted it in their gardens because it's like a bee, you know, it, it climbs on things. Wow. Wow. So it, it was beautiful to look at. It had these lovely purple flowers mm -hmm. and a nice vanilla smell. Mm -hmm. So it was lovely. And think about it, right? But what people didn't realize was how deceitfully aggressive Kudzu was in taking advantage of the right climate. Yeah. Now this is a comparison to spiritual things. Yes. Starts off seeming to meet a need and doing it very well. But there's another plan afoot. 
now it has spread to so many places that the government, remember? Yes. <laughs> so people to plant it, mm -hmm. has classified it as a federal noxious weed. And this is because, and I went to the New York State website to learn more about it, a kudzu invasion can cause several different types of major impacts on native plant communities. It can crowd them out, it can outcompete them, and it can physically crush them. And it goes on. As heavy infestation of kudzu can completely cover trees of almost any size. Remember, it's like a bee in it, it climbs, right? Kansunrianas can both fell trees from their extreme weight, so they can become so heavy that they actually break down the tree, or nearly eliminate light availability within the forest canopy, weakening or killing shade in town and species, particularly pines. So what it does, it climbs as high as can get, spreads out, cuts off your light, Plants need light to grow. Yeah. And so you either get, if you're underneath it, you get weakened or you die. Wow. So think about Mark 4, verse 19. Mm -hmm. This is what it means to choke the word of God wow. out of your life. Mm -hmm. And wow. when you don't fellowship, yeah. that's what begins to happen. Mm -hmm. Good reason not to fellowship. Seems reasonable, right? But in the long run, what are the consequences? Mm. But as long as we live in this world, we have responsibilities. And one translation of the Bible describes it as legitimate cares. Right? So these are good things, things that happen, good things that happen, responsibilities. And with them come anxieties, don't they? Yes. And in today's world, it's not easy to put away those responsibilities or sometimes manage those anxieties. But in Mark, in Matthew 6, it says, And who of you, by worrying and being anxious, can add one unit of measure to his stature or to the span of his life? Mm -hmm. So what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying is that all these legitimate cures can negatively affect your spiritual growth. So what are we to do? We can't not pay care for our responsibilities. So what are we to do? All right. The Word of God has an answer. You, you need to go before the Lord for wisdom on how to do your life. The Spirit of the Lord will prompt you with the specific steps. The second category is the pleasure and delight and false glamour and deceitfulness of riches. So if you didn't know, there is real pleasure and delight in this world. But if you wait long enough, or in it long enough, it morphs into false glamour and the deceitfulness of riches. It doesn't deliver the things that you thought it would. But Amen. these two Amen. can choke the life of God out of you as they interfere with fellowship. The third category is the craving and passionate desire for other things. That phrase, other things, caught my mind. It would imply that there are things that we should have, right? There are things that are right and good before the Lord for us to have. But this craving for the other things, and those other things can be different things for different people, that's where the trap lies. So we have to be very mindful. 
The Lord wants us to be free of the cares that would choke out his word, his life out of us. And if he, these things can get us to interfere or break fellowship with God or with each other, then it will choke the life of God out of us. So, what does it look like when we're not being choked? <laughs> no, Psalm 1 verse 3 says, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. Psalm 52 verse 8 says, I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. There are blessings to be had in the house of God. Thank you. Psalm 92 mm -hmm. verse 13 and 14. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Amen. They shall bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and nourishing. I went to the Institute for Creation Research and it says this of palms. In scripture, the palm is always a date palm, stately and beautiful. It has extremely deep tap roots called a root ball and thus can flourish even in the desert, growing tall and living long. It is perhaps the most useful of all trees, not only producing dates, but also sugar, wine, honey, oil, resin, rope, thread, tannin, and dye stuff. Its seeds is said Sorry, its seeds are fed to cattle and its leaves are used for roofs, fences, mats, and baskets. Its fruit, and I like this part, its fruit is said to get sweeter as the tree grows older. Ah, and this <laughs> is compared to the believer in the beautiful verse, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish Amen. in the courts of our God. Amen. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Hallelujah. They shall be fat and flourishing. <laughs> that is good. That is good. <laughs> oh, Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so you can see that the things our flesh, our mind will run after the things we want. The Lord will provide his Amen. house. Yes, hallelujah. He will provide it. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Thank you. He will provide it. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Bless you, Lord. Amen. The enemy makes us think. That is our effort, right? Our smartness, our hard work, mm -hmm. our skills, our know-how. Mm -hmm. That's the true source of whatever good we're going to get out of life. Mm -hmm. But in Psalm 33, verses 16 to 17, and verses 22 to 22, it says something else. No king is saved by the great size and power of his army. A mighty man is not delivered by his much strength. A horse is devoid of value for victory. 
neither does he deliver any by his great power. Verse 20, our inner selves wait earnestly for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Amen. For in him does our heart rejoice because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy and loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us yes, Lord. in proportion to our waiting and hoping. Hallelujah. So the things we, the world tells us to trust in, the things we believe are the source of the good in our lives, Scripture says these are devoid of value. That's such a phenomenal shift yes. <laughs> in our thinking. Oh my gosh. Yes, Lord. We tell our children, work hard, do this, do that. We check the boxes so we have a good life. And there's a place for those boxes, but under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Not every child is alike, not every family is alike, mm. not every situation is alike. Yeah. And the plan that God has uniquely designed for your life may not need to fit into those boxes. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Amen. I need to remember this. Oh, yes. <laughs> More times than not. So Proverbs 3, verse 5 is true. Lean on. Trust it. And be confident in the Lord mm -hmm. with all your heart and mind. And do not rely on your own understanding, yes. your insight or understanding. Yes. In all your ways, know and recognize and acknowledge him. And he will direct and make straight and plain mm -hmm. your paths. I was listening to a preacher the other day and he was saying, you know, Faith and trust are, are very different things. Mm. So trust is born out of a relationship. Mm. Yeah. Mm. As you know a person more and more, you learn to trust them more yes. and more, yes. right? Yes. They'll, they'll turn up on time. They're never late. They'll be there for me. And so you can put your confidence that they're going to come through for you. We can trust the Lord. Amen. We can trust the Lord. Amen, Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm. Amen. Sit down and list all the times the Lord came through for you. Oh, my. Oh my God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a song. I'm sure I'm going to get the words wrong. Count your blessings, oh, count them one by one. It's like, count the times the Lord came through for you. And then decide if he's trustworthy. Nobody can force you to trust someone, right? You can't work up trust. If you're working it up, it's not trust, right? It's either there or it's not. Yes, Lord. We have to trust God. Amen. So we need to get to that place of building our trust in him. So when he says, go fellowship instead of working those extra hours, you know that he's going to provide for you. Amen. 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 Glory. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You have to trust him Amen. if you're going Amen. to follow him mm, when nobody true. is looking. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So true, Lord. And since we can't fake trust, real trust. <laughs> We have to be honest before God, right? Amen. Amen. And Psalm 139 says, Search me thoroughly, O God. Really. And know my heart. 
Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there's any wicked or hurtful, unbelieving, untrustful way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is this humble submission before the Lord that will prepare us to desire fellowship. and to deal and work with the brethren who are so different from us. We hear it all the time from the pulpit. We're not our own. And for Americans or Americanized <laughs> people, that's a really hard one. There are cultures where it's important to be part of the community and you're taught the community is more important than any individual person. Wow. And so you do what is good for the family, not yourself. You do what is good for the community, not for yourself. But in America, we're taught we matter, that the individual matters. And there's a place for placing value on each person. But God has bought us. We don't belong to ourselves anymore. But consider who has bought us. Consider the character of the person who has bought us. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He will not withhold any good thing from us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. His plans for us are long term. Yes. He knows what we need today and in six months what's coming down the road. And so the way he sets us up now makes sure we benefit six months down the road. Yes, yes, yes. So a deep breath. We can trust him. Amen. We can trust him to obey him. So when he says, turn up to fellowship with the believers who are not quite like you because I'm commanding my blessings in that place and if you go, you will receive. Go, obey. I was just thinking when the girls were little and we lived far away. My late husband was one of those people who, no matter what, he was going to church. And I remember times I was exhausted beyond exhausted. The girls would have benefited from staying home but we ended up in church. And every now and then I pause and wonder at the blessings that came because we turned up in church. It's, it may call for sacrifice, but the Lord's grace is sufficient. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Always. 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 Yes, yes, Lord. This is a good church. <laughs> it truly is a good church. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you.
Lord. The word of God is not compromised here. Right, sure, yes, Lord. Truth is being taught. Yes. The Holy Spirit is welcome. Amen. Yes. None of these things are small things. Yes. Yes. Truly. Yes. Truly. Yes. None of these things are small things. Yes. So I am going to conclude. <laughs> you know, we started with Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Psalm 16, verse 2 and 3 says, I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good beside or beyond you. Amen. As for the godly, the saints who are in the land, they are the excellent, the noble, and the glorious, in whom is all my delight. The New Living Translation says, for verse, ver, verse 3, the godly people in the land are my true heroes. I take pleasure in them. I take pleasure in you. Hallelujah, Lord. Romans 12, verse 16 says, Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Amen. So Amen. that puts us in that our place, right? right? <laughs> Ephesians 4 verses 1 to 3 says, and this is where the rubber meets the road, right? Mm -hmm. I urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling you have received. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, and with diligence to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Some things, even good things, godly things, are watered by prayer. They come about through prayer. And in Colossians 4, verse 12, we read, Epaphras is one of yourselves, a servant of Christ Jesus, sends you his greetings. He's always striving for you earnestly in his prayers. Hallelujah. Pleading that you may, as persons of right character and clear convictions, stand firm and mature, in spiritual growth, convinced and fully assured in everything willed by God. Amen. And this is the will of God that we dwell together in unity. Amen. 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 Amen.